All right, I want to talk a little bit about pressure support in some detail that has some things that maybe uh, you've forgotten or were never aware of. So I have this 980 in spontaneous with pressure support set at eight. And there's a couple things that uh, I just want to make you aware of. As you know, in pressure support, it just gives you that little pressure boost of eight still spontaneous breath, which means the patient is ultimately in control of the amount of volume, flow, and frequency of their breaths. That is the definition of a spontaneous breath. I want to talk about these two buttons here, eSense and uh, the flow acceleration, which can also be called uh, rise time on the servo and slope on the dragger. I like what Puritt and Bennett calls it in flow acceleration. And so let's talk about that one first. Basically flow acceleration is how fast it reaches peak flow. Now on spontaneous breaths or really any pressure breaths, this applies to pressure control as well, uh, we cannot control the inspiratory flow setting. It delivers uh, flow to uh, help them meet their, uh, help it meet the, the amount of pressure support you have set but we can't control that. What we can control is how fast it hits the peak flow. So to make an analogy like a car, uh, you can go up to 60 miles an hour. Let's say you have two cars going to 60 miles an hour. They're both gonna hit the same peak speed, but one may accelerate faster than the other. And that's essentially what we have control over here is that acceleration. Now you might say, well, why would I care about that? Well, people can be very sensitive to the amount of flow that they have, especially in our COPD population, people who are very short of breath, air hungry, they may want their flow really fast. And so we may be able to tweak this in order to provide a little bit more comfort for them. So you might say, well, why don't we just set it high on everyone so they get their flow acceleration really fast? Well, if you accelerate it too fast on airways that have a lot of resistance, it creates very turbulent airflow and actually can create a little spike in pressure and can make it hit its preset limit earlier, therefore not really providing as much support for them. Okay, so if you look at the steepness of this waveform, this is uh, the flow over time scaler. And it's kind of laid down a little bit. It's accelerating very slowly, okay? The patient's not getting their breath very fast at all. I'll go ahead and speed that up. And see what that does. Oh, look at that. Much straighter. You can see it's spiking a little bit though because it's, it's so fast. And this is going into an open test lung. Think about airways that are really, uh, you know, have a lot of resistance in the way, uh, it may spike, uh, spike that up even farther and it may hit their, that eight sooner and not really provide them as much support. So most of the time we don't need to play with that a whole lot. You can just leave it set at the default, but there are times when you'd want to play around with that. If they have a lot of resistance and you're spiking, you might want to lower it. If they appear air hungry, dyssynchronous with the ventilator, you might want to raise it a little bit. And this key is available on uh, really any breath that delivers pressure. The other thing is the e-sense. This is expiratory sensitivity. Now this one is very useful if you know what it's for. All right, let's talk about cycle. What cycles breath? That, that means what turns the breath off. And in pressure support, you would think that it's pressure. You'd think it hits the pressure and it turns off, but that's not actually what cycles or turns off a pressure supported breath. What turns off a pressure supported breath is actually flow. And so the way that this breath works, a pressure supported spontaneous breath, flow goes into the patient Flow stops going in once it hits the pressure, okay? 
I know it sounds like I just contradicted myself, but I'll, I'll get to it. Once it hits the pressure, it's pressure limited, not cycled. Once it hits the pressure, flow starts to decrease. And in this case, I have the E-Sense set at five. Once that flow drops to 5% of the peak, so somewhere way down here, they can turn in, they can uh, exhale. If I were to turn this up, then that means that once the, you can see the waveform changed, once the flow hits 80% of the peak, they can uh, go ahead and exhale. Now, you might be asking, well, when is that useful? Well, specifically it's useful when they have a leak. So let's go ahead and roll this down to something kind of lowish. And I'm gonna try to mimic this. Now, I'm gonna make a little leak in the circuit. And what's gonna happen is, if you think about a leak, the ventilator is gonna try to maintain this pressure support of eight. And to do that with a leak, it's gotta keep pushing flow into them. And if it keeps pushing flow, then flow never drops and the breath doesn't turn off. So what you end up with is a really long eye time. Now, pressure supported breaths are flow cycled, but if it doesn't drop to that flow to turn the breath off, there is a secondary timeout. And I can't remember what it is. Might be three seconds. Not sure. We'll see. But it's long. Okay, so I'm gonna create a little bit of a leak here. Might have to play with it a little bit. I'm gonna create a long, oh, there it is, look at that. There, I got it. There's your timeout. Now, if you think about a patient, if you think about a patient who you're trying to wean or you're doing non-invasive ventilation, you know, a mask, uh, and, and there's a leak in there because they have a beard or a, a tube in their nose that's coming out the, the mask or just the shape of their face, then um, it's gonna be a problem. They're gonna have a really long eye time and they're not gonna tolerate it. You're gonna be ending your wean earlier. You're gonna be intubating because they can't tolerate non-invasive. So in that case, remember, it was really long because it couldn't drop its flow down because it was trying to maintain that pressure with the leak. Well, what if we turn that up? Sometimes we can't avoid a leak. Again, non-invasive ventilation is a great example. Or chest tube. There's a little leak in the chest tube. Or non-invasive, like I said, you just have gaps and they're just not gonna tolerate the pressure support. Well, if we set this at a higher number, then when we create a leak, let's see if I can do this without making too much noise. Okay, see how it turns off then. Actually, it's turning off really fast and it's very sensitive right now. It's hard to mimic a leak, but you get the idea. It's not that long inspiration. If this were a true leak on a true patient, it would turn off the breath easier. Um, I have it, 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 it's in flow sensitivity and it's, it's losing a lot of flow. So it's, um, it's auto triggering is what it's doing. But uh, normally, the patient would have a situation where uh, this turns off easier and therefore uh, they're gonna tolerate it much better. All right, so that's pressure support with flow acceleration and e-sense.